Hello and welcome to Conversations with Experts, episode 2. As you know, in these videos, uh, we try to answer questions that customers are sending to our social media. So one of the first questions that we have is from a customer who's asking, can I find in Matrix Hall the same tools than in Matrix 9? All right, so then let me show you here a few things. First of all, let me tell you that you cannot find all the tools that we have in Matrix 9, but this is not our intention. So this is a new software and the tools, even they are similar to what we have, as you can see here, I'm showing you now the ones from the settings and we have the all the ones like the halo, the prom placer, the head, the bezel. So many of these tools are already in Matrix 9 and we also have them in Matrix Go. Also the ones from the gems. So, but as you can see, they are different from what we have in Matrix 9. So now, as you can see, I just placed a stone and now what I can do is just select any of these tools to keep working with the gems. So we have the gem override, we have the pave, we have the uh, orient to gems. So there is many tools that will sound familiar. And now once you have one gem, you can start to apply any uh, setting to this stone. So now, as you can see, I have the original stone and now I just applied a bezel. The bezel is a tool that we already have also in Matrix 9, but even the behavior is a bit different. The good thing about this one is that it's totally parametric. So now these tools, as you can see in the stack on the right side, uh, you can see the steps that we have done and they are linked together, meaning that if we make any change, now as you can see, I'm just getting the, the ISO curve, but I, if I make any changes as I was saying, everything will follow the original stone because everything is linked with the parametric uh, tree. So now I just linked uh, ISO curve to the bezel that is linked actually to the gem and now I'm applying uh, stones on this curve. So everything is linked and this is the good part of this software, all right? So now as you can see, I'm just moving the stones uh, or just spreading out the stones around this curve and you can just set up a lot of different settings. So here, as you can see, now I said that I wanted the whole curve. So now I have from the very beginning to the very end, and now I can place the prong placer, and then I can start to play with the, the once the prongs are already set, then I can go back to the tool where I was playing with the stones, and I can start to play with the distance, uh, just playing with the stone dimensions or the distance between the stones. So, as I was saying, the, all the tools from Matrix 9 are not in Matrix Hall, but you can do the same that you can do in Matrix 9, but in Matrix Hall. And on top of that, you have the parametric that when it's time to make any change, it's much easier than what it was in Matrix Hall. So the good thing in this software is always the same, is the easiness of change anything and recalculate all the different steps that we are taking. So as you can see in real time, you can see the changes and because you have all the parametric to you can change it at any time. So now if I would like to change the stone shape, the stone that we have in the center, I can change that and everything will be calculated. First, as you can see, we have the prongs that are too long. So I just go to the tool or the step where I have done this. I just fix it. And again, with just a few clicks, it's already, already done. Now, if I want to change the angle from this bezel, I can do it. And again, everything by itself recalculates. So as you can see, it's very, very easy. So you do not, you don't need to think about uh, going step by step and changing everything. The only thing that you need to do is just change what you want to change. Now let me change the prompt to a novel, and look, just one click, you get everything ready. All right, so it's pretty easy. And I think that with these uh, first uh, steps, I think that I have talked about the first question. 
And as you can see, as I said, we don't have all the tools from Matrix 9, but the important thing is that you can achieve even more than what we had in Matrix 9. Let's go for the second question here. Let me just get rid of this. And the second question is, are the Matrix 9 files compatible with uh, Matrix Go? Okay, so let me talk about this. So the first thing that I will do is first go to Matrix 9. Actually, I have it open. And as you can see, I will save this file from Matrix 9 and I will import it to Matrix Go. So you can see what we can do. So let me go to Matrix Go, to the main icon, import, and as you can see, I have this file. Okay, so I imported the file to Matrix Go. And now, of course, that you cannot, you won't have the same functionality that you had in Matrix 9 with the bezel and the stones and everything. But what you can do actually is go to the to the main menu because this is where we will have the legacy import here at the very bottom. As you can see, we have the legacy import and the legacy matrix migration wizard. What are these two things? Let me start with the legacy import. When you click on the legacy import, matrix call detects anything coming from matrix. So for instance, the gem, because if we want to make any change to this gem or just think about having a big buffet and you want to find all these stones, that's the way to do it. So now, as you can see, he is just detecting the stone but it's not telling me any information. But if I go to the Gems tab and go to the Gem Overwrite, as you can see now, here on the right, I already have the stone to be modified. It's telling me what dimensions I have and all the settings from this stone. Now it's five millimeters. If I go to four millimeters, as you can see, I just changed the width. Now I have this oval stone. I can go back to edit. Let me just click here the same dimensions, four millimeters, and now I have a smaller stone. What I will do is just get rid from this bezel and I will apply a bezel to the new stone. So I can make any change. So you can see it's pretty much the same that matrix. Now I can make any change to the to the gem. So everything will follow the everything will follow the gem. So now I go for oval and let me here click on six, if this is okay. And you see, we already have it uh, here. So of course that you cannot have all the functionality that you have with Matrix 9, but you can open it and you can make a small changes. You can get the drop of files. You can now here, this is the finger size. So now what you can probably do is add a new uh, ring rail and then apply the profiles that you have or something else that also you will be able to do is just get all the profiles that you have and also the ring rail so you can uh, start to keep it parametric so as you can see here I have the profiles and the ring rail and I just went to the sweep one the second let me do it again so I select sweep one the parametric one of course I select the ring rail and then the different profiles that I have here. I click enter. Now, as you can see, this is not the result that I want, but because I have the tool to, to keep working on this sweep, what I can do is just go to here and flip it. If I flip it, I get just what I want. What's the important part here is that I have it parametrically. So now I have the profiles that I imported from Matrix. So now what I can do is start to modify this profile. So any change that I will do, because now I have done it with the Matrix code tools, now I will keep it parametric. So just say, let me go and scale these ones. So now, as you can see, everything has changed. So when you import a file from Matrix, you don't have all the functionality that you had in Matrix 9, but and it's important to say that you still can do many, many things. So as you can see in this model, we just imported the stone, we changed the stone, and we did quite a few changes. And now, very important, you have all the parametric history. Okay, 
Uh, next question. How difficult is the transition from matrix 7.5 to matrix call? Well, um, of course, the matrix call is a new software. It's not an upgrade from matrix, so there is new workflows that you need to learn. But this being said, because uh, we are the same company, uh, we try to keep the same workflows. All right. So now, as you can see, of course, that we have all the parametric side that you need to learn, as you can see in the, uh, the stack on the right side. But we also have many tools that are performing the same that they were in, in Matrix. So, for instance, the settings. So, if I go to the settings tab, we have all these different tools that you can see on the screen that uh, are the same tools that we had in Matrix. So, just say that I want to apply a head in this uh, gem. As you can see, we have level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, as we used to have in Matrix. So, the, of course, that there is a, a small changes the way that the tool performs uh, compared to Matrix 9. Uh, all these little stacks here, for sure that there is a few difference. But the good thing is that the behavior is pretty much the same that we had in Matrix. So, for any Matrix user, it shouldn't be hard to get the new workflows. All right, so it would, uh, as I said, it wouldn't be hard at all. Next one, how do I create custom gem in Matrix as it is created in Matrix 9? Look, I'm going to be uh, honest with that. We still don't have this tool ready in Matrix uh, Go. This is something that we will have. Uh, we already have it in our priority list to, to do it. We know that there is customers who use the custom gem to create any gem that they purchase as, and is not an standard one. So don't worry that we are looking already to that and this will be done in the next uh, releases that we will have. This is something that we will be working on. Next one, is there, is there any limitation using Matrix Call during the jewelry design process? Okay, about this I have to tell you not at all. Even Matrix Call is different from um, Matrix, we still can create any piece of jewelry with all these tools that we have in all these tabs that I'm showing you. Look how many we have. Even we have Clayo as we used to have in, mat in, in Matrix. So we have plenty of options to create any piece of jewelry. So yeah, you can create uh, from scratch and anything that comes to your mind, uh, you can do it in, in Matrix Go. Well. All right, so let's go for the next question. Can I import Matrix 9 files into Matrix Go to continue, to continue the design process? So this is a question similar to the first one that we have been talking today. Um, I showed one part of the legacy import from Matrix. So I also can show you another part that I think that is quite interesting, that this is the legacy import that we have been already talking, but we have the legacy Matrix migration wizard. What is this for? Um, look. This is all that you can import from uh, Matrix, and I think that it's very important. So you can import the Matrix Projects folder, the, Ma the Matrix Projects Archive folder, the Pro Matrix Project Manager database file, and also the Legacy Matrix Profiles folder. I think that this is very, very important for any Matrix user, because what this means is that if you, for sure, that if you have been saving all your profiles from, from Matrix, you can import them into Matrix Go. From the moment that you click in this uh, box, you can already see all the folders that we found in your computer from Matrix profiles. So the ones that you can see here now are just the standard from Matrix, but I can import all of them or just the ones that I, I want from these different categories that we have in this, uh, in this box. So, just say that now I will go, let me see, just to show you which is the one that I can... Uh, if, no, this one is too many and it will take too long, but yeah, let's go for the profile placer. So now I'm importing, as you can see, 260 uh, something profile placers. So very, very fast, it's importing all of them to the profile placer in Matrix Go. So these are the ones, as I said, the standard ones from Matrix, but any one that you have done before, you can import it, okay? All right, so what's the next question? What can I do in Matrix Go that I cannot do in Matrix 9? 
while I'm importing the profiles, let me tell you, one of the most important things is all the parametric side. So Matrix 9 doesn't have the parametric side and in Matrix 12 we have all the parametric side. So when you get the parametric and you get used to the parametric, uh, it's very, very hard to go backwards because it helps you a lot during the design process to make any modification, to make anything that uh, you want to change. You can do it very, very easy with all the parametric. Uh, you have access to all the different steps and then very easily you can change anything that you want. So for instance, I have this uh, folder here that let me, sorry, this uh, file, let me just uh, put it away. So let me start a new one. So I will go to just say a curve. I will start from scratch so you can see all the parametric side. Let me do it very, very easy. So I will place just one profile in this curve. Let me just adapt it to the thickness and width that I need. I will open the library. Now here you probably will see all the profiles that I have already brought from Matrix. Okay, so yeah, I think that with this thing will be okay. I will add another one. And now I will go to the sweep one. And from the sweep one, I will make the sweep. All right, so we already have here sweep, very easy. He's following the curve. The profiles are just at the beginning and the end of the curve. And now the next thing that I will do is from this surface, just extract an ISO curve. I will place it just in the middle. Here I can click on 0 0.5. So it just places it in the middle. So now, this will be the curve that I will be using to place the stones. Keep in mind that everything so far is linked. So I have the original curve, I have the sweep, and now, as you can see, I'm adding the stones. Let me give the reference from this surface so the stones get the right direction. Now I will just adapt them to the surface that I have, and I will move them position to whatever, whatever I want. Okay, so you can keep moving them depending on how many stones you want to place, stone size, etc, etc. Probably because I want to make here just a, uh, a channel cutter, let me drop them down. Like this is okay. Alright, so now, uh, cutters. Here we have different cutters. The first thing as I was telling you, because I want to use the prong setting, I will place just a channel cutter following the stone's dimensions. And now I will go for the gem scatter. So I want one hole for each stone. Let me just adapt it because it's too long. That way you can see it better. So we have the channel cutter, we have the cutters following. Everything is linked. As you can see on the right with the stack that we have with the parametric T, everything is linked and everything is following the original curve. So now we will go to the Boolean difference. This is something that you cannot do in Matrix at all. So you can do Booleans, but the good thing about this is that the Booleans will keep the parametric side. Okay, so now there we go. So the Boolean is done. We have the gems, and now I will place from the settings, the prong placer, just one click, I will get just select the stones, there we go, and I get all the prongs. So this is just something to show you what you cannot do in Matrix 9, all right? So, so far, there's nothing uh, that you cannot do in Matrix 9, but now the good thing is that you can start to make any modification that you want, even the Boolean is done. First thing, as you can see, the I have to move the ISO curve because I have the border in one side is bigger than in the other, so if I go to 0 0.5 just in the middle, I click enter, and look at this. Everything has recalculate, and now it's just in the middle. This is a mistake that I did before, but instead of matrix that you would have to go and undo, and do and do, now you can do it everything in matrix 9 in just one click. Now, let me just get the curve. As you can see, I have the control points. What happens if I get this point and I move it just a bit like this? And keep in mind that the Boolean is done, everything is already uh, 
Adam. Look at this. I can keep adapting the curve to my desire and even the booleans, everything is placed, recalculates by itself. So now I don't like this finish. So as you can see, it didn't take me a lot of time to change anything. Now I can change anything, uh, not just the original curve. If I want to make this wider, I just make it wider here from the end and you will see how everything adapts to the new width. So it's very easy to make any modification and this is very, very useful when you are doing a design and you need to make any change. All right then, so I hope to you that, that you liked all that we have been uh, talking today. Uh, we have been uh, talking a lot about the difference between matrix and matrix goal and how you can uh, go from one solver to the other and what you can do in matrix goal and you cannot do in matrix goal that you were doing in matrix. So I hope that this helped you and thanks for watching. Just please keep send, uh, sending us as many questions as you have. We will be happy to keep doing these videos and thank you for watching.